way you're gonna fight some more of the same enemies you see all throughout the game. Be sure not to jump for items in this area, because you're bound to get toppled by these fucking falling pieces of ceiling. How's that for a cheap ass bullshit death? And while you're passing over the split, be sure to watch out for the waterfall coming down. Even if your timing is good, and you jump as soon as the fall passes by, sometimes a waterfall will just appear out of nowhere, or you gotta, or just not come down at all. And if you get hit, you fall all the way back to the bottom, and you gotta climb all the way back up. So, you'll unlock a diamond door, and later a spade door. And on the way up, you just might notice that this vulture is flying in very similar fashion to the one you warped in earlier. So of course it makes perfect sense to dive into it again. I mean, who cares, might as well risk a precious life leaping into this bird, it's so logical. Well, holy shit, it works. So, another bonus stage, more gold, enemies, etc. Still no sign of that goddamn lion or medicine, but it helps to get all these points for extra lives. You get up by leaping into the lower right hand corner of the stage. So, when you get to the top, you'll find this area where you have to jump across these platforms. It really sucks because the jumping is horrible, the platforms are small as shit, and if you fall between them, which is very easy to do, you'll fall all the way back down here where you get the spade crystal with that snake. And you have to go all the way back to all the shit you just came from. I can't really think of any advice on how to advance through this shit other than get used to these shitty controls. Even if you get used to them, it still sucks. So eventually you'll get across and unlock the heart door. Then you walk across this passageway and... What the fuck was that thing? As if it wasn't tough enough to get across this shit, losing countless lives in the process, the game has to shit down your throat by sending this giant stone face thing at you. Well, the trick here is to retreat as soon as the face appears and jump up on that ladder to let him pass right under you. You move on and there's the precious Raj Diamond. Now on to save that minor inconvenience. I mean, your niece. You hop on this descending platform, and all these areas here are really just the end of the hallways, this area here with the long ladder. So just grab the gold at the end, now and again, and keep going down. Now you figure the best bet is to just let it take you to the very bottom, right? So you just stand in there, doo -doo 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 -doo, and... Ah, another bullshit death! I can't get out of this! How the hell were you supposed to know that this was the platform to jump on? Just so you know, it's the third concrete floor down. So you go down this route, avoiding these sparkly firework fireball things. Can't tell what half the shit is supposed to be because of the graphics. Anyway, you get down here further and guess what? Another one of these face dudes. Like you're expecting this again? Repeat the earlier strategy of going back and grabbing the ladder. So when you get past it and go up this ladder, go into this little nook and jump up to find the key. This key will unlock Quick Claw's cage. Whenever we find the goddamn thing, so you finish climbing, and here's that balloon. So grab it, and now you're gonna float up and skip a whole lot of shit. If you hold the down button, you move slower, and if you hold up, you move faster. That way, if you don't have to run into these bats and vultures. If they hit your balloon, you'll slip off, but probably land safely where you can continue climbing the hard way. You'll eventually get to the grassy dirt area where you can't go any higher. Grab an extra life on the top level, and go down one level to grab a diamond crystal. Now you've gotta get back down. So just jump right off the edge. You might end up hitting a vulture or a bat, but you'll probably lose more lives going through the maze. When you get to the bottom, swim left until you find these vines. Take the left side and you'll start climbing up these levels one by one. When you get to the first ladder, look around for the spade crystal that's nearby. You'll now have a spade and a diamond, and you won't need any more crystals, thank god. Keep following this road, you'll be doing a lot of climbing, avoiding shit, and trying to stay alive. You'll open up the diamond door, so all that's left is a spade. But first, you'll get on this grassy dirt plane and that vulture's gotta be a warp, right? I mean, look at him, the other two were. You dive into him, and sure enough, you're somewhere else. Now this bonus stage is freaking huge in comparison to the other two. There's different patterns for the platforms, much like in the main level, and there's plenty of gold to grab points. But there's also a lot of enemies, hazards, and it's easy to get lost. Finding your way out isn't fun either. The best course of action from where you stop is to walk all the way across, climb down the last ladder you see, and just keep going down. Keep going down all these ladders, grab some gold on the way down, and just keep going until you reach the bottom. You head all the way to the left, and here's that goddamn lion. Unlock the cage, grab him, and now you've got one more step to make before you get out of here. Just climb this ladder, take a right, go up this way, in this little area here, 
to find the medicine, which of course is invisible. Get out of here, head to the lower left hand corner of the entire stage, and jump into the corner. Now you've got the medicine and quick claw, but let's say for the sake of argument, you never found the medicine. It's safe to say it's very possible due to its invisibility. So you get out and you discover you've searched every plane of existence in this game and still no medicine. You know what has to be somewhere in that warp you came out of. So you go back and... And that fucking bird is gone. You're all done. You have no chance to go back. Even if you kill yourself, it won't come back. The game is essentially over because there's no way you can win now. Another major flaw. So you continue onward and... Uh, another one of these faces. You're starting to get sickening already. Alright, grab the extra life in this little nook. Grab the gun that's right near the spade door here that you'll open up. And now you'll realize that you're right where you teleport to get to the underground kingdom. So the layout isn't too bad. It at least gives you a nice path to achieve all your goals without having to go too far out of your way. It's just figuring it all out and putting it together that takes forever. Before you head to the underground kingdom though, you might want to head back and pick up this gun in extra life. Then go back and head for the underground kingdom. We're getting there folks. Now, I used to have a really hard time finding my way around this place. And I still can't say I really know my way around it, because it's hard to distinguish one room from the next. You run into a lot of dead ends and rooms that can't really take you anywhere. But, if you know the shortcuts, you don't have to worry about getting lost in all this shit. First thing you gotta do is find the courtyard, and that's pretty easy. All you have to do is just keep going down, and no matter where you're at, you'll find it, as it stretches across the length of the entire board. Once you get to the courtyard, go all the way to the left, and go up the ladder at the end. Hop off at the first platform and head right until you get to the ladder up against this wall. Head up there and you've unfrozen Rhonda. But you're not done yet, you've gotta get out. Notice that the music changed to the bonus stage theme once you grabbed it. Go back to the ladder that took you from the courtyard and just climb all the way to the top. Now you gotta swing across these, uh, <coughs> vines. You'll swing across two vines, land on a platform, and find another pair of vines. There are a total of four pairs of vines to get across. As if it's not enough of a pain in the ass to swing across these things in the first place, if you fall, you're going all the way back down into the great below. Then you have to find your way back to the top and do it all over again. This whole fall down a hole and climb back up process is getting extremely monotonous at this point. Avoid these icicles, or whatever the hell they are. Drop down the second space, and head for the corner. That's the only way to get out of the underground kingdom, whether you have Ronda or not. Now you're still not done yet. After you make it back to the main level, drop down off the edge here, and just go back here to where you started the whole game. You blink a few times, and now the game is over. Now here's a strange part of the game. If you forget to save Quick Claw, or if you don't get the Raj Diamond, but you still save Ronda, then you won't ever finish this game. You'll just wander around hearing the bonus stage song loop around 150 million times. And this is all you get for beating the game. This uncreative, generic congratulations screen. Activision should send you a check for $100,000 for putting yourself through so much trouble to beat a video game. And see how it says, please try another world? You know what that means? It means you start all over again, and all the items are in different places. It's basically Super Pitfall Director's Cut. Who the hell is gonna have the patience to mercifully sit through the entire game, and then sit through an entirely new variation of it? The big problem with this game isn't so much the difficulty of the game itself. The controls take a lot of time to get used to, but the problem is that everything takes a lot of time to get used to. Like finding shit. Crystal balls, for example, are all over the place. You could have spent days and days just finding where the hell everything is. Then you gotta figure out where the doors are, which crystals to get first, the warps, where to find the diamond, the key, the medicine, the lion, the girl, the exit. Then you gotta put the puzzle together and do it all on a specific path. Plus you gotta avoid dying. It's just too much shit for the average person's patience. There really isn't much good to say about it. It really ruined Pitfall's chances at becoming a huge franchise. Despite a few attempts to resurrect it, this game just buried the Pitfall name too deep to dig it back up. So that pretty much sums this one up. See you next time.